limiting work in progress is a characteristic feature of Kanban. It is of paramount importance as to why the system works so well. When you first think about it, it may seem counterintuitive. Are we telling people to work less? No. Limiting WIP doesn't mean to limit work itself, but to limit how many tasks can be started all at once. Kanban came from manufacturing, where businesses keep a production inventory for use in their processes. There are normally three types of inventory, raw materials, work in progress, and finished products. Why is limiting WIP considered a good thing, and should it be? You've probably heard people say that cash is king. In many cases, this is true. It's not always important how many assets a company has if it can't convert them to or otherwise generate the cash when it's needed. At the end of each month, you can only sell finished goods, while any incomplete work becomes an expense, not a value-adding asset. This singles out throughput, inventories, and operating expenses as three main measures of productivity constraint. So why should we limit work in progress? To foster a culture of finishing work and reduce time to market. Your profit lies in the finished goods, not in wit. And if you're running a cash-tight business, do you want to have 30 items halfway through to being sold, or rather 10 items ready to go? If a company can sell only 10 items a month, focus on those 10 items so they can be monetized instead of starting with 30 and adding unnecessary work that can't turn profit. If you limit your focus to just a few things, they will get done quicker and you'll avoid having too much work started with nothing to show for it at the end of the day. Thanks to starting work only on what can be finished, you are ensuring the process is running at its highest possible material throughput. That means less waste and more sales. Furthermore, by forcing the team not to process new items while previous ones are still in progress, you'd be implementing a true pull process model. Limiting work in progress is good, but if done incorrectly, other problems may arise, like a company producing fewer items than it is capable of. It's important to look at where in the process you should limit work. Let's look at an example. We have six people split into three teams at a chair manufacturer and they can produce three complete chairs a week. The design team can design seven chairs a week, and the builders can produce five chairs, but the painter can only paint three chairs a week. What would happen if each team worked at their maximum capacity? Remember that WIP is an inventory item. We notice large stacks of inventory at the design stage and under chair assembly, but why are items piling up there? Because the chair painting team is the bottleneck, the constraint of the process, only completing three chairs a week. Here, we would limit the chair assembly team to only produce three chairs a week. Ideally, the other teams should help the painting team when they are finished producing their items. This would improve the system's throughput. Suddenly, the company is producing more than three chairs per week, and employee engagement is improving along with the throughput. To apply a WIP limit appropriate to your process, you need to analyze it and find the slowest cog in the machine. For a start, just walk your factory or office floor. Look around for team members who are overloaded and have a lot of inventory on their desks. That's how you will find your bottleneck. Go talk to the team working at the bottleneck step and see how you can limit work to them. It will help your whole company work faster and your employees will love you for it. As your process changes, the team grows, shrinks, or changes. The applied WIP limit may need adjusting. Keep an eye on it to maintain your optimal throughput levels. Now you know why limiting work in progress is a good thing and how to apply it. Follow us to learn more about WIP limits and productivity.